From Hackintosh to Macintosh, my journey. Hello and welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. Where do I even begin? <laughs> Back in 2017, if you're a viewer of this channel, I did a video on how I built what's called a Hackintosh. I'm a custom-built PC modified to run Mac OS. I'm the best part of both of you. And then in 2019, I did a recap to that because I built a new Hackintosh, a brand new PC with an AMD Radeon card and all the trimmings. Boy, that was nice. But as you all know, Apple has since moved on from Intel's processors and they've developed their own M series of chips, which makes Hackintosh I wouldn't say a thing of the past or dead, but insanely difficult to, to do, I guess. Okay, insanely difficult might be overstating it. So before you blast me in the comments, what I mean is current Hackintosh builds are really geared toward Intel-based Macs. And since Apple is starting to fade out Intel-based Macs for M1, it just made sense for me and my company to move over to Apple Silicon. Anyway, Manu, take it away. At least for me. Some of you out there might be way smarter, but I don't think I have the gumption to try and hack together a new machine. I just had to do what a lot of people did and bit the bullet. Yes. I bought an actual Mac. So this here is the Mac Studio and we opted for the Mac Studio since it seemed to be at the time the correct way to go as far as me wanting not to have to buy all my screens again and my keyboards and all this other stuff. But this was the, and I didn't want a laptop, right? I needed basically a machine that can push through Adobe, Premiere, After Effects, Audition, stuff like that. That's the stuff that we live and breathe on here at Pixel Valley Studio. So Apple released the Mac. So this particular model here is the M1 uh, Max. Yes, it's the M1 Max Studio Max. And it's got 32 gigs of memory. It's got a 512 gigabyte SSD. Why didn't I go bigger? Well, because we use a NAS. We both have kind of uh, remote NASs at our office, me and uh, Frank. And our NAS is sync, and that's actually 14 terabytes of space. So I don't really need it in the local machine. I can use this for caching. and you know, general purpose work and stuff like that. But as far as uh, Premiere and stuff like that, this is the workhorse that we use now here, the Mac Studio. So things I love about the Mac Studio and things I hate about not having a Hackintosh. Number one, power and efficiency. This thing is amazing in terms of power and efficiency. This puts out a quarter of the power and heat that my old Hackintosh running the AMD Radeon 7. Yeah, the 7. That thing eats heat for breakfast. It's just wow, so much. This guy barely breaks a sweat and has faster render times. It doubled the render speed of the Hackintosh. And uh, it, it, I never hear a fan ramp up. I don't think this thing thermal throttles at all. I haven't been able to, I haven't personally been able to hit a thermal throttle ever. Um, it's basically a really good workhorse just for what it is. So power and efficiency is a win. Rendering and speed improvements. Like I mentioned, this thing burns through the projects that we have now. I'm not talking about like, you know, 3D work and like Blender or really CPU intensive jobs, but the GPU is quite enough for the client work and the Pull My Focus episodes and the, the general work that get us paid through the day. This thing works fine. So as far as speed and rendering, like I said, I'm not doing 3D and stuff like that. You know, After Effects, Premiere, Audition, stuff like that. I'm more than happy with this. The 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 uh, the speed and the ease of use is just ridiculous. And it's kind of cute too, right? Software upgrades. As you know, if you ever dealt with a Hackintosh, 
every time Apple put out a software update for the operating system or anything, you kind of sweat a little bit, okay? So your procedure for updating a real Mac is just hit the button and say, all right, do it and walk away, come back and it's done. Generally speaking, I didn't upgrade my Hackintosh an awful lot. Um, it was it was a little bit rough. Uh, so upgradability of a, a native Mac is just clearly the winner. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, please hit subscribe and smash that like button. It really helps our engagement. Also, we have a Patreon page set up, patreon.com forward slash pull my focus. And uh, that would greatly help us to continue to bring these great videos to you guys. So thanks a lot. Things I absolutely hate about not having a Hackintosh. Number one, lack of upgradability. How many of you out there have like two or three Macintosh machines that just don't do anything in your house anymore. And I had an old MacBook uh, Pro uh, that I used to use for editing. It's my dedicated DJing uh, laptop. I just put a replacement battery in from iFixit. That's about as far as you can go with old Macs. They have zero upgradability. I am trapped in this case. If I want to upgrade the RAM, I don't know if I want to upgrade the hard drive. Good luck. Um, if I want to upgrade the graphics, oh, forget it. The Hackintosh was absolutely terrific. I could throw in more RAM. I could put a different graphics card, provided it was an AMD or something that would support it. This is going to be another brick in the house in two or three years. Number two, lack of choice. It's kind of similar to the first, the, the first thing I said. I was able to pick whatever. Uh, case I wanted. I could kind of figure out the form factor I wanted, whether I wanted a full ATX case or a little mini case. Um, there was a huge list of su supported motherboards that you can choose from. You can choose whether it had Bluetooth or not. You can choose, you know, like I said, all the things you can choose the color, you can choose the form factor, you can choose whatever, as long as the, uh, as long as the devices fit that kind of Mac OS ecosystem, you could put stuff together. And if you failed, you just got something different. I mean, that flexibility to me was kind of blending the worlds of the PC and the Mac together and using their strongest points and creating this monster machine that was exciting and great. So lack of choice. Cost, just like points one and two, I could choose what I wanted to buy and at what price it was. Generally speaking, PC hardware is way cheaper than this stuff. I mean, Apple has their walled garden and that's working for them. That's why they're a trillion dollar company. But um, with the Hackintosh, I think I spent a little less than maybe a thousand, maybe 1200 and got a machine that was way faster than the fastest Mac at the time. Now, this Mac Studio ran us about $2,300. I even have to add a couple of other things, okay? So right out of the box, this, this doesn't do it for me. I had to have some uh, special Thunderbolt 4 cables for my monitors. Uh, I learned that the scaling isn't exactly what I expected. There are some videos talking about that on these guys, unless you buy a Mac display. Uh, I had to buy a hub to, uh, to get more USB. Yeah, yeah. I don't love this about not having a Hackintosh. In conclusion though, I am quite happy with the results so far of this little guy. I mean, like I said, it's way faster than my old Hackintosh. I can wake up in the morning, see an update and go, huh, I'll go get a cup of coffee, hit a button and it's updated. If that kind of thing works for you, then great. Go get yourself a Mac. Uh, I don't know if you have many options for Hackintoshes anymore, but Generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with the Mac. And like I said in many other videos, I absolutely love working in Mac OS. The Finder, just the way it works for me creatively, it does not stop me. Is There's no hindrance where I can be creative on this thing. It's just how it's built, just the way it is. Now for the elephant in the room. You're probably yelling at the screen saying, but Manu, what about the new M2 Mini and M2 Mini Pro. And to that, my friends, 
I'm pointing back to, well, what I hate about not having a Hackintosh. And that's simply, uh, if I wanted to, I could upgrade my processor. I could upgrade my graphics card. And, you know, if Apple decides, like they did, to drop another machine like the M1, the M2 Mini, and it has specs similar to this, except for maybe the graphics card, and the highest version goes a little more pricey than this, but, well, yeah. So here's the deal. For me, I spent many, many, many hours configuring and building and researching and finally getting a, a Hackintosh to run. It was a difficult job. I felt a lot smarter after I did it. And it was one of the most rewarding experiences in my technical life. And I don't think I'm gonna miss that. But you know what? I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. Were you a former Hackintosh user that moved over to the dark side and got themselves a Mac? Uh, do you refuse to use Apple now that you can't really do Hackintosh anymore? Or are you just gonna go for it and just dive in head first and get yourself a Mac? Let us know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below. And uh, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts about this and that. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. And we'll see you soon, right? I'm gonna go and edit this guy, uh, I'll edit this video on, on this. It's not plugged in, so I, I have to go to plug it in. So there's that.